And welcome back to This Week in Channel 9. We're here in Building 83 getting our coffee on. Absolutely. I've got five shots in this. Five shots? Five shots. You're not messing around. No, I'm not. All right, so uh, you should introduce yourself. This is Paige Bailey. Hi, everybody. I'm Paige Bailey. Uh, she's a, a cloud developer advocate. Um, you uh, focus on, uh, on AI and machine learning. Absolutely. So AI and machine learning, uh, also deep learning, and some of the um, more distributed data tools. So everything that you would use in a distributed Hadoop environment. Awesome. And yeah. in honor of Paige, um, I'm Christina Warren, by the way. Uh, I'm here almost every week. Everybody knows me. <laughs> no, they Christina's don't. famous. No, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, but, but, but in honor of Paige, like, we actually, it's a, it's a pretty AI heavy show. Absolutely. Which is what we like. Uh, but first things first, one of the few non AI stories we have. Uh, this was big news. Um, basically, um, at the uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon Tech Summit, that's a mouthful. I was going to say, say that three times fast, um, as one would expect at the Qualcomm Snapdragon Tech Summit. What is a Snapdragon? It's the name of the, the system on a chip that Qualcomm makes. Oh, okay. So if it. you have basically any type of phone except for an iPhone, mm -hmm. there's a better than 50% chance that some sort of Qualcomm SOC is in it, mm -hmm. and probably a out of those, probably better than 50% chance that it's some sort of Snapdragon. Gotcha. Okay, but anyway, at the summit, we announced something really cool, which is um, always connected PCs uh, from companies um, like uh, like HP um, and uh, Lenovo to um, and Asus. Basically, these are PCs that are always on, have access to LTE, are built on ARM processors, meaning the Snapdragon processors, but they're like full PCs. Wow. So what's cool about this? The details, we've got a show, uh, in the show notes, you can kind of see what the computers look like. There's some other uh, links around the web that kind of go into some details about how Windows 10 works. You might recall a few years back, uh, we've already tried this whole Windows on ARM thing before. It didn't go that well. Um, Windows RT was not a good thing. This, I think, is going to be a lot better. So the idea would be that you can actually, there will be an emulator that will be able to run x86 compiled stuff so that you can have all of your native apps uh, that you would expect on Windows to run on these devices. But the big benefit of having mobile processors in these devices is that you get killer battery life, like 20 hours. Oh my god. So can you imagine like having like 20 hour battery life and then always being able to connect, like have LTE wherever you are? That would be fantastic. So I think for a lot of cloud people and a lot of things that we, that, that a lot of people like modern workflow, <laughs> this has potential. So I'm excited. Absolutely. I'm excited too. All right, this, uh, we want to talk about this. Uh, Visual Studio 2017 version 15.5 is out. Oh my gosh, yeah. I saw that I saw that announcement on LinkedIn just recently. But 15.5, um, the biggest thing that you'll be excited about is the improvement in um, sort of speed and performance. So the, the example that I think we have listed in the deck is loading a solution in nine seconds or eight seconds. Yeah, something like yeah, that. So, so Super fast, way faster, like 40 uh, time improvement in unfold time. Um, so that's awesome. Absolutely. And and the thing, um, so I'm mostly a Python and R developer, so not a whole bunch of experience with Visual Studio. I used it in college for like a C++ class, and what I hated so much was that it took forever to download and install. But now, like these new versions, you can install it in less than five minutes, which is absurd. That is absurd. Yeah, because yeah. you're right. Like It can take forever to install. Yeah. Um, in addition to Visual Studio 2017, 15.5, um, Visual Studio for Mac uh, has also received an update. So Absolutely. Th check that out. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're just kind of going to go through a bunch of Channel 9 news. Mm -hmm. First and most important, you may be watching this on channel9.msndn.com, but you might be watching this on YouTube, and that's because Channel 9's on YouTube now. Woo! Uh, so if you're on YouTube, like hit the subscribe button, like right there, and turn on <laughs> notifications. Isn't that what the kids say? Absolutely. Like turn on notifications, hit subscribe, and uh, so um, a lot of our shows we're going to be experimenting with putting them on on YouTube, doing playlists. Give us your feedback and let us know what you think. Also, we've got some new shows coming out, including an Internet of Things show. Internet of Things. So all, all of the edge computing, the IoT edge stuff that you might have been hearing about on Azure. Um, that will be covered, and if you go and take a look at the IoT show, um, there should be a couple of episodes out now for you to watch. Yep. So that would also be great. coming is the, the AI. AI show, and so myself and the glorious Seth Juarez. We love uh, Seth. We miss Seth. Seth, feel better, buddy. We're we, thinking about you. We do. He's he's broken his leg, like but but you know like not in the not in the the good luck show business sort of. Sense. Yeah, and in like the torn ligament like <laughs> owie kind of way. We're yeah. thinking of you, buddy. Though we are. Yeah. Heart. Heart. But, um, but yes, so the AI show, um, and there will be content coming out pretty quickly, uh, including a show uh, co-hosted by Seth and I, and then also a couple of shows with Buck Woody 
and um, even some from the product teams. So, so be on the lookout for, for more shows. Also in Channel 9 News, uh, we always love to talk about Gals, the latest episode of Gals with uh, our favorite producer and studio manager, Golnaz, and Sierra McDonald, who's a senior program manager. That is uh, from, from uh, the Xbox Advanced Technology Group, so she does really cool stuff. That's up now. Be sure to watch that interview and see that show. Great stuff, as always. Um, Sierra's been at, at uh, Xbox for nine years, so, so she's seen some stuff. Excellent. That's cool. Um, talk, speaking of AI, uh, we want to talk about the AI school. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so the AI school, um, aischool.microsoft.com, has a number of tracks similar to the tracks that you would find in Coursera or edX. So if you want to learn more about AI, if you want to learn more about machine learning or even analytics, um, there are a number of tracks that you can sign up for and courses you can take. And as you take them, you get like experience points or, or something of that yeah. nature. So you can, you can point to them on your LinkedIn. Um, you can tell your boss that you got all those great trainings um, and then ask him for a raise or whatever. So aischool.microsoft.com, definitely check it out. All right, this was cool. Uh, this was a blog post about Contextual Bandit, uh, a breakthrough that enabling deeper personalization. That's a great villain name. It the is. Contextual I want to be Bandit. I want to be the Contextual Bandit. <laughs> I steal context from every corner. I don't know. <laughs> um, but basically, this is like, you know, news portals, and, and this is like a common use of of of, uh, of, of like deep learning and, and AI stuff is to try to figure out what your interests are, what you're clicking on, what you're not clicking on, so that you can get a customized news stream. Right, so Amazon can know to market all of its pink things my direction. Mine too. Mm -hmm. um, I love rose gold. I'm still not over the fact that the iPhone 10 doesn't have a rose gold version. Disappointments, disappointments. Yeah, so so basically, um, the, uh, during the, um, the annual uh, conference on neural information processing systems um, that was happening in Long Beach, uh, uh, a team uh, presented research, um, basically looking at interactive machine learning and contextual bandits. I don't know what a con what is a contextual bandit. So I am I'm not familiar with that either. Okay, um, but but uh, I do know that the NIPS conference has been having an amazing Twitter stream, um, and it's really uh, if you haven't taken a look at it, definitely do. The amount of NIPS attendees over time has increased exponentially, and also the rate at which people um, sort of apply to go. So NIPS historically, like five years ago, like nobody cared, nobody was really going. I think Wes McKinney had a tweet recently where he was like, I went to NIPS five years ago and I have no clue what NIPS y'all are talking about right now. <laughs> well, um, no, well that's because everybody wants to get paid, right? And yeah. like. It's a good AI school or previous story. Get paid, yeah. then go to NIPS and, and, and check deep out the learning. stuff. Deep, yeah, deep learn learning, deep learning all the things. And deep learning can go and stuff for you know making sure that our news is more personalized. Yeah. Uh, hopefully not biased though. Hopefully yes. and hopefully not fake. This is true. Uh, all right. Um, this is a huge milestone. Uh, the uh, the DNR show, the .NET Rock show, celebrated its 1500th episode. 1500th episode in 15 years, I yeah. think, too, which is, wow. It's that's one of the amazing. oldest podcasts, I think, on the entire planet, and this is so cool. Absolutely. Seth and I um, were fortunate enough to do show 1499. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, so we didn't get to, we didn't get the 1500 slot, but we did do show 1499 and talked a lot about AI. So um, and, and this, this one, though, they're, they're talking about the um, sort of the history of .NET and, and the evolution that it's progressed through and, and the book that one of the guys is writing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah the, the Richard Campbell is writing, and yeah. that's so cool. 1,500 shows. Congratulations, .NET Rocks. That's yeah. a huge milestone. My, um, one of my podcasts just celebrated our 150th episode. Oh, my gosh. And that was huge for us, right, because we do a weekly show, and, like, that was over three years. So I can't even imagine 1,500. 1,500 years. Like, fi how has the internet changed in 15 years? Well, there's a lot less Internet Explorer 6. That's true. <laughs> um, there's a lot less Flash. Yeah. Um, a lot more social media. A lot more social media, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Yes. I mean, I'm going to say good overall, but I'm going to say, like, I don't know, like, we'll see what society has to say. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Is, is how much better or worse is the internet in 15 years? And, and uh, what do you think of uh, .NET Rocks? Mm -hmm. um, speaking of .NET, uh, there's a great blog post on uh, Telerec about the state of .NET in 2018 um, and building better web apps with uh, ASP.NET Core. And uh, check out this post if you're a .NET person kind of want to get a lay of the land of what's happening in the .NET ecosystem as we head into 2018. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it's already like December? I cannot. This year's flown by. 
It really has. I mean, part of me is not that sad to say goodbye to 2017, but I'm also kind of surprised that we're really right up against 2018. So anyway, check out thestateof.net. Yeah. Um, you wanted to talk about this. This is really cool. The Voyager 1 fires up its thrusters after 37 years. 37 years. Like, I, I can't even imagine, you know, having a car in a garage and trying to fire it up after 37 you, years. It would be very difficult. Like, you see it on those those old car, you know, the, the shows where people, like, try to, like, revive old cars that if the motor hasn't been turned on, or you know, it's really difficult. Yeah. So they NASA sent a signal out to the spacecraft, um, waited for a while to determine if the signal had actually been processed and if the, if the spacecraft was responding. And then they were able to make it launch its thrusters and do some performance tuning. So now Voyager gets to last for an additional two to three years. And as a space nerd, that is awesome. That's so cool, which yeah. means that Voyager is going to basically be around for like 40 years. Yeah. That's so cool. That's awesome. Good job, NASA. Um, all right, now it's time for pick of the week. Uh, Paige, uh, let's talk about your pick, because this is so cool. You were telling me about this yeah. before we went into the episode, and it's good stuff. Absolutely. So last week, I, I went to a conference called Pi Data that happened in NYC. Um, and it was a great conference for a lot of reasons, but partially because we had a two-day extended unconference called the Diversity and Inclusion uh, in Scientific Computing Conference. It was sponsored by NumFocus, and each group was, um, they were tasked with coming up with an idea and then implementing it in two days, um, and then presenting it to the community and determining whether NumFocus should adopt it. And my group's task was to come up with some tangible ways that you can incorporate diversity and inclusion into your machine learning algorithms. Okay. So what are some questions you could ask throughout the entire process as you're coming up with your idea, as you're testing out your hypothesis, as you're cleaning your data, as you're running your model, you're testing it, um, and you're finally deploying it, how would you be able to tell if there were uh, you know, particularly biased practices, and how would you be able to counteract them? So, I love this because it's so funny because we were talking about uh, biases um, in, in AI models and yeah. you mentioned that you just did this project. Uh, Paige has it up on GitHub so you can check it out. You can see the repository and mm -hmm. see what's going on. Yeah. This is amazing and I love that you did this at an unconference and this just kind of came out of what you were already talking about and that it's built. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing group to work with. There were seven of us who were very excited. Um, we did an extensive literature review. We, you know, you can take a look at the tool um, and, and it, it was just a really fun time. Love it. Yeah. All right, my pick of the week, and this is completely self-serving. It's adorable. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. So my friend Cable Sasser, who is a developer, he tweeted, uh, he's like, Cable, you do music sometimes? Uh, yeah, Have you? if you didn't read the living section of the Oregonian in the 90s, with this awesome photo of, his, uh, of himself in high school, um, with all kinds of keyboards and, and making video game music. And as an adult, Cable builds software and also builds video game music. And so that reminded me, of uh, my first brush with, uh, with, with, with computer fame. When I was on the uh, front page of one of the local sections of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, cutting the uh, ribbon to the IBM computer lab. Is that not adorable? She looks like Matilda. This is so cute. <laughs> that was me. That was me. That was, that was me um, at six years old, uh, right, uh, cutting the ribbon to a writing to read lab. Um, uh, the, the headline is computers put crayons on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And given kind of what my life and my, where my career has taken me, it, mm -hmm. pretty fitting. Absolutely. So that's it for us. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you, Paige, for being on. It was my pleasure. Um, you're going to be spending a lot more time in, uh, in the Redmond area, right? I'm, I am, and I'm, I'm extremely excited. I currently live in Austin, Texas, which is a great city, great location too, but I will be joining y'all in Redmond the first week of January. That's awesome. That means you're going to see more Paige, not just on the AI show, but on other things on Channel 9. And like we said before, we are on YouTube, so if you want to hit that subscribe, hit that a like, and uh, hit to turn on notifications, we'd appreciate it. See you guys next time. Awesome. Have a great weekend.